What's up, y'all? Jesse Warden here. We are at the toe end of Virginia, really far west, which is where it touches basically Tennessee and North Carolina and West Virginia. And at the bottom is Jefferson National Forest. And we started from the Elk Garden Trailhead. So we're gonna take the Appalachian Trail up to Thomas Nub Shelter and then back again the same way tomorrow. So I got Abbott's man. He's feeling good. We had a, a four and a half, a little bit over hour drive here. We had to get up really early, so he's uh, he's feeling like me, a little rough. Not a lot of sleep. It's 37, but it feels like 72 because <laughs> of all the gear and because of all his junk in the trunk. So it's a bit rough. So we're gonna take it slow. It's about 11.30. I'm hoping to get there by five, so I got like, Five and a half hours, you know. I've got uh, water because I'm concerned that the spring behind it is might be frozen, and it's going to get down to 22 tonight. It says it's 37 right now. It's supposed to be 48 today, but the weather here is notorious for changing, so it is packed today. A lot of horses went on the other trail, and the reason I came is that Syntax 77. He came here twice. The draw of this place. There's ponies, it's not just the views, because you can tell there's not a lot of trees, so you get a good view, but there's wild ponies everywhere. So I was hoping to get a selfie with Alice Man, a pony and I, we'll see if it happens. Otherwise, it's just gonna hammock camp for one night and then leisurely stroll back and four and a half hour drive back, back to Richmond. It's this like Skyrim. Oh, it's, that's not the trail, buddy. <laughs> Good boy. Goofy, goofy, man. Alps, man. In the forest. Now we gotta go through the weird thing. Let's see if he can do it. Can you go through the weird thing? Oh, what a smart dog. Go ahead, buddy. Nope. Go through the weird thing. Nice. Nice. Dude, you're a rock star. Gotta register. Well, it's clearly so cold here. <laughs> Fall came early for these trees. There's nothing except for a few dead leaves. These ones shed their leaves quick, didn't they, Alice? Part of the reason I wanted to take this trip now is because it's prime time fall season. And I figured if I went out west, fall would be further along because, you know, it's just colder out here. And they had snow, I think, yeah, Thursday, two days ago. So my hope was we get some good views when we get to the top because this place doesn't have so many trees up top. So you can actually see the mountains really well. And my hope was I could get some good fill fall views on the way here. It was gorgeous. All the trees are red and yellow, and some of them are still changing, so it's still kind of early, which is weird. You'll see some of them are like half green, half yellow, half red, half orange, but it's beautiful that way. So it's the perfect time to be here in fall. Appalachian's all about the white blazes, at least here anyway. And there's no horses allowed on this trail. There's actually a horse trail to the right of us. And there must be at least, I counted four horse trailers at the trailhead. So they're having a gorgeous day for a ride. I wish I was a little guy in Labyrinth so I could ride you. I was, was the name Pinfold or is that the dog's name? I forget the main character. Ooh, coldness. 
Man. Man, this whole thing is uphill. We've already done 600 feet. We got another 1,100 to go if we take the lookout. We don't have to go left and go to the lookout, but I think we should. It's not that far. You're good, buddy. I'm just talking to myself. Gigantic icicle. Look at the size of that thing. Wow. That's really big. So there's two things I actually learned at the last hike I did, and I wanted to share what I learned. The first is a heat index. So I am a kid of the South. I grew up in the South, Georgia, Virginia, and I had no idea what a heat index was. I thought a heat index just means it was really, really hot. But what it means is that when you sweat, there's no room in the atmosphere for your sweat to evaporate. And if your sweat can't evaporate, you don't get cooled off. So your body keeps getting hot. And eventually that leads to heat exhaustion where you get like goosebumps, you get all dizzy, you get tired. And if you can't cool down after that, you have heat stroke. And that's where your organs and brains get cooked and you basically die. And so I was suffering heat exhaustion and I didn't know it. So the second day I had gotten no sleep and I couldn't start a fire because I forgot my lighters and other things. So I didn't have any really good food and I had also had some very heavily salted nuts. So while I had tons of water, I was sweating profusely and could not cool down. I started getting goosebumps on my arms, felt really dizzy. So I laid down in my chair on the trail and I took a nap for about 30 minutes and that immensely felt better. And what I found was that because of the amount of weight I was carrying, it just immensely made me hot. So what, if I didn't have it on, I could probably walk like 50 yards and be fine. You know, it was like 97 degrees, heat index of 105, I'd be fine. But with this heavy pack, and I probably had at least 40 pounds of gear, including the food that I didn't eat, but I had to pack out anyway and throw it away, even 10 feet was just exhausting. And so what I did is I would take like five steps, chill out, and if I started feeling dizzy or having goosebumps, I would find a shady place, drink some water, sit in my chair and just relax. And so I ended up sleeping again at the shelter because it was shaded for another 30 minutes right on the ground. And by the time I got to my car, it, you know, it took me like eight hours to go, I don't know, six or seven miles, but it was all uphill. And once I got out of that stream area, it was super, super hot and uphill. And I was just, you know, going really slow. But because I was going so slow, my phone had died the night before. My mom and my, her majesty, the wife, had never, you know, seen me take that long. But they didn't know I was going on this, you know, 14 mile thing. I didn't know it was 14 miles. I thought it was only like six. So they had called the police on me. And the sheriff was about to go look for me. And he was at my car. He was a nice guy, but he was crazy. He was just going to go look for me miles with just a bottle of water and his, his flak jacket. <laughs> He's totally hardcore. But anyways, he's pretty awesome. He's a nice guy. He told me uh, a shortcut to the gas station right next to the Wintergreen Ski Park. There's a really nice gas station which had Gator and I bought tons. So what I learned about heat exhaustion is that if you're out there, even with water and you can't cool down, just put a tarp, get in the shade, and just take all your gear off. Have the ability to sweat if you can, but stay out of the sun and just cool off. It may take you... 10 times as long and that's just how it is. Second, I will never, ever make fun of people with camp chairs ever again. That chair saved my life. It allowed me to sleep 
It allowed me to relax and cool down. I love it. So I, I will bring it everywhere now, even in the winter. So we have our first pony sighting. Albus hears it. Let's see what he does. You hear it, don't you? It's big. There they are. There's a brown one. Albus, you be nice to them ponies. No, no, no. You be nice to ponies. Hey, you be nice to ponies. They will beat you up. These a brown pony. Albus, you be nice to them ponies. Yes, it's a pony. You're hilarious. I got, you, you realize he could take you twice on Sunday, you know that, right? Okay. So, let's go up this way. I was on a... All right, we're gonna take it right to Mount Rogers. Join the immensely awesome view, Albus. So anytime you see the double blazes, that means it's about to switch back or turn. So we gotta switch back. It's right up there. So if you come off the AT on the fence, you're greeted with this. What do you think, buddy? He's like, I want to take a nap. That's what I want. I don't blame you, Elvis. There's no trees over here to hammer camp. And down he goes. <laughs> You ready, buddy? I just can't get enough of that view, you know? That's the summit. In Tax 77, he camped right there, I think. But behind that field, the trail, the campsite he was at, I'm in a campsite right behind it. And so I like it has a fire pit and a bunch of these pretty thick pine trees that totally blocked the wind. They said it wasn't supposed to win, but now it's like six you know, miles an hour. So I brought my wind gear, I'll be all right. But I think I'm gonna set up a hammock here. Maybe hang out for a couple hours. I'm gonna go at least explore. Once I set everything up, I'm gonna go explore where the bear box is. I, I think it's over there next to the Thomas shelter. I've never been. So I'm gonna go with him without all my gear. I'm gonna go walk, see where the shelter is, see where the bear box is and then come back, eat, and then I'll go back later and put all my smell stuff there. I don't need water, I don't think. I've got a 1.5 liter and a 700 milliliter that we only had about half, he and I, so I think we're good. I might need water tomorrow morning, but I might have enough for coffee. So this place is packed. There are people arriving, leaving. There's people camped already all over the place. So, but beautiful view. The thing is, the sun is setting over there. So I think 
it's not exactly in the valley, but it's to the right of the valley, so I might be able to get a good shot. Anyway, let's set the hammer. So they're not calling for rain or any type of snow precipitation this evening, so I'm not going to do the tarp. But I wanted to show you the hammock setup in case you're not aware. Hammocks are super complicated. They're not as simple as tents. The only advantage is that you don't have to sleep on the ground. And some people like me don't like sleeping on the ground. And we also like complicated things. So this is a heavily modded Blackbird XLC. It's made by a company called Warbonnet and they sell a bunch of additions to it. One of the nice things about this hammock is that over here, there is this shelf. And so when I'm lying down, I can put all kinds of things on this shelf right here. I love putting like my knife and my head lamp and things like that. But I keep my phone and my bear spray with me to keep them warm and batteries too. Sometimes water and water filter. So this, you just tie it to something out. Sometimes a little lower. I probably should go down to this one instead. Just so you don't have to use the weight to move things down, but it's really nice. And then on the top of it, I actually have the winter top cover. And what it allows is it covers like a tent, but it still gives enough airflow out the feet end, the foot end right here. So when you have hot air and moisture coming up, it comes out. So it's not a complete sauna in there with moisture, which you don't want when it gets below freezing, but it still keeps it warm enough that it'll give you, you know, three to four degrees. And then even though it's covered, I still have a net where I can see out. And then the under quilt is a 20 degree. So you can see the under quilt right here. This is filled with down, probably I think 850. And it's 20 degrees, which means that it'll keep it comfy about 20 and the hammock. Now the problem that I do, and a lot, of, a lot of people have this, is that when I buy things, I get in the same dark olive green. The problem with that is that when you're trying to get in at night, it's hard to tell if you're dealing with the bottom cover. This bottom cover right here covers the under quilt, so when wind hits it, it doesn't steal the heat that's from the bottom of the hammock and the under quilt. And even on the bottom, it doesn't steal that heat, so this protects it and it zips to the top instead of this zipping to the hammock directly. The challenge is that when you sit, you can actually sit on this or this instead of the actual hammock. And I've done that when I didn't have the, the air thing, I just sat on the under quilt and broke it because it has a rope that attaches, so that was really sad. But this is a really nice setup because it'll block the wind on the bottom. It'll keep some airflow in here. So this will add maybe one to two degrees. This will add maybe three to four. So I mean, in total, you're getting five degrees. So I, I could say super comfortable down to 15 without worry about wind. And I could set up a tarp to block wind. Suspension system, I have just some simple carabiners with Beckett straps. And this is just a half hitch that I've done twice. So this can hold about 300 pounds. And I just sit down slowly, but it, it's, it's pretty tough. And so these straps go to the tree and they have a fish hook. And I try to do it on the right so it pulls the strap and not hurting the tree. I should probably make this a little flatter. I probably will after this video. It's hard to feel my fingers right now. It's 39 degrees. And then over here, it's the same concept. It's just a bit higher because you usually want the foot end usually a bit higher. But the problem with hammocks is that you've got to get in and test it, get in and test it. And so I've got the leveler here, which allows me to see if it's level. And then when I get in, if this is tense, taut enough the ridge line so the ridge line is pretty taut when i get in you can press down on the hammock and just you know test if you want but i always get in readjust get in readjust and then look at this thing just to make sure you know is it level and do i need to go up or down tighten blah 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 and so you can get out on this side too but i keep this closed but there's the shelf which is super awesome so that'll keep all the bugs and cold out there's no bugs though it's freezing So yeah, that's the, the hammock setup. The shelter's there. And then if you take a right at this path, you get the privy, which is cool. It uses compost style. So you just fill the can with like 
wood chips and leaves. And then comes out to this absolute gorgeous, gorgeous view. The whole valley. messed up and I brought I had the tarp up to block the wind because I brought my daughter's synthetic 50 degree and I the one I had for Albus is my overquilt which is for 40 degrees or 50 degrees <laughs> so I'm gonna combine them wear clothes hope this tarp blocks some extra wind which is not really windy but everything helps and just pray What you doing? Where did you go? What? What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Day two. We it's about eight fifteen. Albus and I are headed to the car. It's about four and a half miles, I think, maybe four miles. Most of it's downhill, which is nice. But I mean, look at this unbelievable view. Can you believe this? It's out of control. So I had a really bad screw up on this trip. When I was going through my camp gear, I found one of my sleeping bags and one of those stuff sacks that you can compress. And I found it odd because I don't like leaving down sleeping bags compressed like that for you know weeks, days. I like to keep it out and fluff it up and only compress it when I'm packing. And then when I come back, I unpack it and let it lit down and expand again. So I thought nothing of it, put it in my bag. Turns out that was my daughter's synthetic bag, which is rated for, I think, 50 degrees. And it's also only goes up to my chest, basically. So... Not only does it only go to my chest, but I mean, it was supposed to be, you know, it was 20 degrees about two hours ago. So I woke up around six, it was 20 degrees. <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was dumb. And then I had brought my down overquilt for Albus, which is rated at around 50, but I've tested it to 30, it's super warm. So instead I gave him the ground pad and just said, tough it out, and he didn't even use it. So it was 20 degrees and windy. They said it wasn't supposed to be windy. But I doubled them up with my night clothes, basically just long underwear, and I was super hot, so it worked out well. There were parts that were cold, like if it came out of the, the bag a little bit, but I had the wind protector on the bottom. I had the enclosed winter tarp on the top. I had the Eno tarp with the doors closed. So even though the wind was coming from the side, the doors blocked it a lot. So I stayed super warm and he loves this weather. So not the worst screw up I've ever had, but that was dangerous. <laughs> it was really cold. There was a huge family staying in the, I think the second floor of the shelter. So I might've had to sneak up there with them. But anyway, off we go. I did walk through the morning forest Alps man, he feels a lot better. He got tons of water. He's just like the cat at home. He's got to drink the water that's moving. If it's a puddle, he gets kind of nervous. Pretty funny. Albus, what do you think? He's like, I want to go where you're going, Dad.
So Her Majesty got this. This is a solar powered battery. And I was using it. The plan was to charge my camera batteries, but it was so cold this morning it wouldn't work. So I carried it in my pocket for about a quarter mile down the down and up the mountain. Anyway, I will not be bringing this again. I thought it'd be cool to charge my phone, but I lost the phone cable. And this thing weighs a ton. <laughs> it's just not worth it. Oh look, it's the box. It's the box, Albus man. Jesse Warden and Albus Dumbledog for express checkout, please. Ah, oh, jeez. I don't know where I signed. That dog. He already knows what to do. I'm so proud of you. He said you can't teach an old dog new tricks, huh? Well done. Bye, buddy. This is it. We are done as soon as we get over that hill right there. Thomas is like, I can smell that horse. Oh, now you're whining? Dude, we're like almost there. You get to sit for five hours. Are you kidding me right now? Dude, we're like right there. You get to sit for five hours while I drive. <laughs> 